Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim G.K. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim J.K., your host. Today I have the pleasure of having Jeffrey Fox again. We're going to talk about how to become a CEO and also trans- segue into the transformative CEO. If you'd like to join the conversation, please feel free to call in at 347-324-3460. Or you can post your question in the chat room or email us at info at business show. Jeff, welcome to the program again. Thank you very much. I guess to begin with, kind of give us a story behind the first book, How to Become a CEO. You know, I think listeners like this story because it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like a fairy tale. I had been putting together ideas for my kids and for the kids of my clients, just jotting down little ideas because, you know, clients would call me up and they would say, you know, Tim is graduating from the university wellness store, and I say, would you give her him, him or her a call? And so... I was on the board of trustees of a college, Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut, and they asked me to go and give a talk one night to kids that were graduating with honors academically and had also won varsity letters. And so these are boys and girls, you know, graduating, you know, 22 or 21 years old, whatever. And so what I did was I brought this idea that I had, densely typed, a single-page monograph type of thing, spiral-bound, and it's all the ideas I've been putting together for my kids and everybody. And I just had my name on it, essentially, and I handed it out as a gift. You know, they said speak for 20 minutes. I knew that meant 10, and that's what I did. I spoke for 10, and I handed out this gift and said, here's some ideas for you guys as you enter the world. Now, unbeknownst to me, the kids started making copies for their parents and friends and relatives and what have you. And mm-hmm. all of it, some of it, most of it, whatever, got into the hands of a book packaging packager up in California, and he called me up and he said, Jeffrey, I, I think you have a book. And at that point in time, I had not titled it. And so I said, okay, what does that mean? And so he said, well, for a small fee, we'll make it look like a book. I came up with the title, How to Become CEO, because most of my readers are very ambitious, um, or they buy my books for ambitious people, And so, which I've learned later. At any rate, a week later, he calls me up. He said, this is too easy. I said, what do you mean? He said, he said well, I've got you a a very interested agent. Oh, I said, I love, I love easy. And so, and two weeks later, I went, of course I had an agent then, you know, so I'd walk around the office and I would say, Hey, did my agent call? Did my agent call? You know, like I was a Hollywood dude or something <laughs> like that. And then one day she did. And she called up and she said, and Doris Michaels of the DSM literary agency in New York city. And she's been wonderful and been my agent for all 12 books. And she said, uh, Jeffrey, I've got fantastic news. And I said, what is it? She said, well, we have, uh, an offer for to publish the U.S. rights of your book for fifty thousand dollars, and I said, "Well, is that Yankees five, Red Sox one, Yankees five, Red Sox three? I mean, what does that what what does that mean?" And she said, "Well, that's a terrific offer for a first time non celebrity author. And by the way, I'm still a non celebrity author, to tell you the truth. But at any rate, I said, "Well, let me think about it." And so, an hour or two later, at seven minutes to twelve. She called me back and she said, Jeffrey, I have got fantastic news. And I said, what is that? She said, well, we have a preemptive offer to publish the U.S. rights of your book uh, for $125,000. And I said, (laughs) yeah, and I said, what's a preemptive offer? And she said, well, if you don't accept this offer by 3 o'clock this afternoon, it disappears. Do you want to think about it? I go, yeah, I'll think about it. I'll take it. And so that's how... And then the book was published, you know, a little while later. As a matter of fact, there were very, very few. I think no, actually no changes at all to the copy. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a very easy book. You can read it in an hour. And uh, it's very fact. It's very, you know, boom, boom, boom. Here's what to do. Here's what not to do. And um, it made the New York Times bestseller list, made many bestseller lists, frank- frankly, around the world. And Business Week, Wall Street Journal, Amazon, Knight Ritter, it was number one in Turkey, Russia, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and it's been published in 
I think, 35 languages now as we speak. Um, there are about 200 and something, 225 or so, international editions of all my books in, in all kinds of languages. But that's how it started. Was, that was the story. What was the magic behind this particular book that just rose to the top? I mean, it was because it was a simple read, and it said exactly what I thought. Hey, this is exactly what you need to do. That's right. This is my it's advice a, to you. It, the number one thing about my books is they are readable. Now, that sounds like, duh, but they are readable. You can read them backwards. You don't have to read them for, from page chapter 1 through chapter 25. You can read them. You can start in the middle. And, and my books are really a collection, if you will, of to-the-point essays. I mean, for example, in this book, How to Become CEO, I say stuff like, you know, don't take work home from the office. Maybe that's a one- or two- or three-page chapter. You know, skip all office parties. Don't have a drink with the gang. Avoid superiors when you travel. Uh, overpay your people. I give, I, I give these kinds of um, with, without nuance, you know, without hedging, you know, no, polit, no pol- political gimmickry here. It's right straightforward, and I think that's what people like. They, 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 want, they don't want to have to fool around, and I don't try to overwhelm them with language either, even though I do make up words in every one of my books. I make up a word and stick them in there, and some of my readers have great fun thinking they discover these words and are always telling me <laughs> you know, Mr. Fox that's not a word <laughs> oh really <laughs> I, it is now <laughs> now it is I mean I made up words like administrivia scattergram uh, dollarization uh, in my last book I think I used the word ostrichical and ostrichical is uh, like an ostrich and they have their head in the sand now, actually, there's no such word, ostrichical, although there is now. It, when someone, and so when you look it up, you look up the Latin, you'll find that the root for uh, ostrich is avis struthenine or struthius. And when you look up struthius or struthenine, that means having one's head in the sand. So, Well, tell us you know, a couple of key points in how to become a CEO. What key points, if you put two things that you want the listeners to remember out of that book, what two things they really need to keep in mind? Well, um, to, uh, I, 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 some of your advice. Well, I think the first thing is that uh, each of the chapters is, 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 in a way, its own lesson, and some are more more applicable to people at different stages in their career. You know, for example, if someone really did want to become CEO, and by the way, you can become CEO, in my view, if you're a waiter. In a, in a restaurant, you're the CEO of that table. If you're a truck driver, you're the CEO of that truck. If you're a crossing guard, you're the CEO of, that, of the safety of those kids and so forth. So everybody should look at their job as if, you know, they really owned it. But let's say they wanted to become the CEO of a corporation. And the first way you would get to be CEO is to start your own job, your own business. But, you know, things like avoiding staff jobs, seeking a line job, Know the difference between what is a staff job and what is a line job. A staff job is almost always something in administration, uh, human resources, nothing wrong with these jobs, of course, uh, financial officers, that kind of thing, whereas a line job is sales, marketing, production, to some degree, research and development, innovation. Those jobs are the kind of jobs where you can make much more of an impact on an organization, and therefore the chances of being promoted and rising higher are better. I also have a couple of many chapters in the book that are are sort of sort of like indirectly advising and how to and how to get ahead. And one is don't have a drink with the gang. You know, another is uh, you know skipping all office parties. Kind of socially correct kind of advice and and you know you you don't want to don't have a drink with the gang is one is one sentence one page long and it's what young people need to know they just can't for example go out and have overserved themselves uh, where you know colleagues can see it or bosses can see it and that kind of thing and you know if i were writing the book today i would say don't go on facebook or don't go on wow. facebook with some don't go on Facebook with some ridiculous photograph of you and a bunch of guys or gals, you know, tailgating and looking out of looking unprofessional, which too many kids do. 
I mean, I talk to companies all the time when they're when they're interviewing people for jobs, they check them out on things like Facebook and mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And so, you got to be very careful that what you put on the internet is not going to come back and haunt you. When it comes to social parties and drinking with the guys, will that kind of label you antisocial, and it can kind of hurt you? For instance. Or well, you don't have to actually have the drink drink. You can have a club soda or something like that and say you're trying not to drink or I don't know. Yeah. Well, I look at it this way. Obviously, if you have to go, if it's some mandatory thing, you drink club club, club soda. I would never go to an office party uh, without a spouse or significant other, whatever the phrase is these days. Okay. Uh, if they're not invited, you shouldn't go. So and then just skip it and or show up for five minutes and have a club soda and leave. The antisocial thing is good because what happens then is upper management takes notice of you that you're not part of the social milieu, if you will, and they start looking at what you're doing on your job, how you're producing, how much much work you're getting done, and that's what you ultimately will be promoted on. You're not going to be promoted because you're the hit of the party. So. And then the other thing is, too, is that, you know, in business, if someone works for you, one of my rules in my book, How to Become a Great Boss, is be fair, firm, and friendly, but not a friend. Now, it doesn't mean you can't make friends with people that you work with. Obviously, you can. But to really socialize with them, you have a whole other circle of people you socialize with. So, and especially if you're superior to some persons in terms of, uh, reporting relationships, you have a leadership job of some sort with one, two, or three or more people reporting to you. You never socialize with those people. Mm-hmm. So wow. antisocial can be actually good. Good for you. Let's take a break real quick, and then we're going to go and talk about the transformative uh, CEO. We'll be back in a moment. Uh, you're listening to The Core Business Show. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours, and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to The Core. Once again, here's Tim Jepang. We're back again we're talking to Jeffrey Fox, and we're going to talk about his book, The Transformative uh, CEO. Kind of segue and tell us about how this book, this particular book, came into being. Uh, coming from uh, well, to run. how did you come by, uh, by and writing this book? Well, um, I got a call one morning from a fellow named Robert Reese, and mm-hmm. Robert is the host of a television show called the, and a radio show called The CEO Show. He also publishes a quarterly forum to called the CEO Forum, and it goes to all of the CEOs on the New York Stock Exchange and on the NASDAQ. And we got to talking, and he had done all these interviews with some very, very terrific CEOs. And I said to him, well, why don't we write a book? And so what I did was I reviewed these interviews and then we, that were already taped, And uh, then later uh, interviewed uh, many of the people I'd selected and and many of uh, and various other communications. And so essentially what the book is, is I wrote the book in terms of what the chapters are and the information and all that in my usual style, which is boom, boom, boom. And then because of I was able to remember various statements that various CEOs made that supported the concept of the chapters. So for example, I have a, maybe a chapter in the book might be how to innovate. Now, other people would write books and books and books and books on how to innovate, and I write a maybe um, you know a four page, a four page chapter on how to innovate. And what I do is I use comments and notes from some of these amazing CEOs that support my premises, and so. That's the way the book reads, and that's the way it works. This is not a book of interviews. This is mm-hmm. a book of 
contributions, quotations, and so forth from a variety of CEOs, about 45 to 50, who say things that that your listeners really should would really want to know in terms of r- running businesses, turning around businesses, and so forth. Transformative CEO, I made up the phrase, it's like a lot of things, it's a combination of common terms and never put together before, but the transformative CEO is someone who turns around a company, who transforms a company from one culture to another, who starts mm-hmm. new enterprises, starts new industries, starts new businesses, and these are, are are pretty remarkable, pretty remarkable leaders. What your listeners have to know is that sooner or sooner or later, every company will require some form of transfer, transformation. The markets will change, competitors will change, technology will change. The government may do and may come out with another set of stupid regulations or whatever, forcing change. And so, because of that, the transformative CEO faces the facts, doesn't fight the facts. And, and that's why you have, you have to have wow. transformative skills. Wow. We're talking about innovation. America is known for innovation for the past 150 years. Right. And physically, we used to make a lot of things by hand. Now is mostly, is turned to more intellectual type properties. Uh, everything is cloud-based, computer programs, there's not a lot of physical items that's in the horizon that I think for our country is coming up with. There are some things still coming out, but things are becoming cloud-based. How do you think that innovation, if you're a CEO, hey, I'm General Motors, and just we'll pick on them, and we got to do business a lot different. We can't do it like we used to do it before, and we know that no, in 100 years, and maybe if there are any gasoline-powered vehicles left, how can you... When you're already into a type of situation like a General Motors or a steel mill, how can you compete in this innovate, you know, innovative world? It's a great question, and the answer is you have to. You must innovate. And what what, what is the what are some of the barriers to innovation? First of all, it's um, unwise leadership. Leadership that is not willing to under to see the changes required. That's a typical of General Motors, for example. This is a very insulated company. It still has the silos, and despite the bailout money, you'll see in three or four years, General Motors will be staggering again because they're not innovating. And one of the reasons they don't innovate is because they don't change the people, and the culture has to change. There are the, four things that are required to be successful in business. Marketing, which is the identification, getting, and keeping of profitable customers. The short version is the getting and keeping of good customers. That's marketing. Innovation. Mm-hmm which is anything new, whether it's how you answer the phone to how you make the phone or whatever. It's, and, it's, and it's working with whatever is new out there. That's innovation. The other is wise leadership. You have to have leadership that is willing to confront the cultural issues, the change issues. And then the fourth thing you need is a winning culture. It's not good culture or bad culture. It's winning culture or losing culture. And that's what the transformative people work on all the time, and that's getting a winning culture. And a winning culture is one that's willing to do things differently. Now, one of the problems a lot of these big companies have is they have so much investment in the past. Their investment in assets, their investment in plant and equipment, their investment in the way these they do things, the way they talk, the way they hire, the way they compensate. Well, those things may no longer be relevant. And so you need transformative management that's willing to change. And until that happens, innovation starts at the top. It starts with leadership, period. Mm -hmm. And so when you have management that's willing to try things, to take a risk, to change, to realize it's going to happen, otherwise they're being ostrichical. They have their heads in the sand, and here come the barbarians to the gate. Wow. Somebody, Somebody someplace is working on a technology to obsolete what your companies do now. Somebody. 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 Someplace. In a garage, in a classroom, in a laboratory. Somebody, someplace, is going to create... I mean, just take a look at things like music, which go, which have gone from, you know, uh, the Victrola kind of thing to vinyl records to, to CDs to iTunes. I mean, the content hasn't changed. The songs are still great. The music is still great, although they can make music electronically better than, you know, humans can, I guess. 
But it's the delivery that's kept changing. If you stuck with one delivery, if you just said, okay, I'm going to just, I'm just doing 45 records, you're out of business. Music is not a business. You're out of business. And that's Absolutely. another interesting thing about innovation, by the way. I think Thomas, uh, Thomas Edison is the, holds the single amount of, most amount of patents of any American. I think there's something like, you know, 1,434 patents or some number like that. Well, he will tell he would have, he has said it in his writings, but Thomas Edison, he never did anything new and novel. What he did was improved what already had been invented. The electric light had been invented 50 years before Edison commercialized it in 1863. Steve Jobs is an amazing innovator. He didn't do anything new. He, he just, as like, like he used to quote Pablo Picasso, great artist steal. And what did he do? He, he, didn't, <laughs> he didn't change music. He, he changed the way music was delivered. That's real innovation. Real innovation is taking current ideas and current concepts and making them better, different. What advice do you have from this point on? We're in 2012, and we're on the advent of 2013. And, you know, this block of time, 2020, is going to be a lot, a lot of innovation. A lot of things are really changing. You know, you, from the record companies to auto, automobiles, the way houses are built, the way we live our lives. If you have a person who is like the General Motors or the steel plant and a CEO walks in, maybe young, who's innovative and has to convince his board or directors or his upper management, maybe he's the CEO. He's still not in full control of his company. Right. What advice you t- would say to him to kind of get the other people on board? Well, first, that's another good question. And first of all, he must, the must get buy-in from whoever is running the show, whether it's the okay. bankers, the investors, the board of directors, the major stockholders, whatever. Whoever brings him in, he has to have a contract with them that he, in fact, can transform the company. That's number one. Mm-hmm. And that, when he has that, when he has that, uh, and whether he comes from the inside or from the outside, you could be transformative if you come from the inside because you know we're all, the bodies are buried, but you are sometimes beholden to long-term relationships with people that weakens you. You have to be very, very tough if you come from the inside to transform a company because you're going to have to change the culture. And then when you come from the outside, it's, it's easier. However, regardless, you must have a buy-in from the owners or whoever is, is I said, running the show. Then that transformative CEO who will become one of those people, by the way, it has the contract to, to change. And the first thing they're going to change is they're going to change the culture. They're going to go from a losing culture to a winning culture. And that means that people are going to be upset. Because whenever you change anything, that has positive and negative effects and ripples on every part of the company. And if people are not going to change to the winning culture, they're, if they're going to try to maintain the status quo and to be silent saboteurs, they've got to go. They've got to go. So that's what the innovative, transformative CEO does. First and foremost, they change the culture. There will be a lot of people that will be looking forward to this new CEO because they themselves, from down below looking above, have seen leadership that's losing leaders. And there's so many good ideas in a corporation that have just been snuffled out by losing leadership who are afraid to change. And so the mm-hmm. transformative CEO can expect to find lots and lots of allies in the new company. Okay. Wow. Anything else you'd like to add regarding your book and, of course, your website and where we can get it? Well, my books uh, are, should be available in all bookstores, but who knows these days with distribution the way it is. But, <laughs> but they, they're definitely available at Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com okay. and things like that. They if people are buying them in bulk, uh, like for their sales force or something, a great source of business books is 1-800-CEO-READ, which is the name of the company and the name of its, its – it's also the name of its, its telephone number. And, of course, my website is www.foxandcompany.com, all written out. It's F-O-X-A-N-D-C-O-M-P-A-N-Y.com. Um, and, the, and, you know, the books are do sell. All my books are still – in print and, and available, and uh, you know, I think that they're, they're so easy to read that if your listeners have any interest in improving their businesses or improving their careers and so forth, they ought to take a look at them. Great. 
Jeffrey, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on the program and sharing us your your thoughts uh, about your new book and also talk about innovation. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Delighted thank you. To be Take care. Bye now. Okay. Take care. Bye now. Again, this has been another production of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. You can download this episode on iTunes and Block Talk Radio. Again, you should take a look at Jeffrey uh, Falk book, The Transformative CO. You can find it on Amazon or your local bookstore, uh, Barnes & Noble. Anyway, everybody, thank you for listening. Take care. Have a great day. Tim Jacquet, your host of the Core Business Show. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For more information about equipment financing and asset-based loans, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. Or call us at 866-611-7457. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to the core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. And thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.